Hello friends, in today's video, I will be talking about all the basic steps that are required for placement of dynamic hip screw in fixation of proximal femur fractures, that means neck femur fractures and trochanteric fractures. So the first step is to reduce the fracture preliminarily as we do in other orthopedic procedures also and that is usually done with the help of fracture table. The things that you need to take care of is to check the AP and lateral views. You should not have any difficulty in getting these views when you place the patient on a fracture table. So before painting and dripping ensure that you are getting good AP and lateral views otherwise you are going to face problems during the intraoperative procedure. So the cortices should be matching and if there is some posterior combination like here then you have to trust the anterior cortex. So there should be matching of the anterior cortex. And in AP view, you should ensure that the fracture is either anatomically reduced or slight valgus like this can be tolerated. The second step is to give the skin incision. Before giving the skin incision, just mark the position of the proximal extent of the DHS. So if you are going to place your leg screw somewhere here, either in the inferior quadrant or in the central part then your DHS entry should be somewhere here that is just beneath the vastus ridge this prominent part is the vastus ridge from where the vastus lateralis muscle originate you can use any blunt instrument to locate this area then start your incision so the incision has been shown here and has been given appropriately the second step is the subcutaneous dissection you dissect this tissue and then you will see a shiny fibrous layer of fascia that is tensor fascia lata. You have to split the tensor fascia lata to see the vastus lateralis muscle. And one important thing to avoid splitting of the muscle which often leads to constant blood ooze. You should go in a plane which is posterior to the vastus lateralis muscle. That means keep your incision slightly posterior to the midline then you will be able to go through the posterior part of the vastus lateralis and your assistant can simply retract the vastus lateralis muscle anteriorly or you can use a homen bone lever also to place it beneath the vastus lateralis muscle like here after splitting of the tensor fascia lata we are able to appreciate the vastus lateralis muscle this part and we are also able to appreciate the posterior border of the vastus lateralis clearly now to clear the bone close to the vastus ridge that means the origin of the vastus lateralis muscle you have to release some amount of muscle from its origin otherwise you will face difficulty in visualization what you can do you can simply place an inverted l-shaped incision near the origin of the vastus lateralis muscle that will help in anterior retraction of the muscle and you will be able to appreciate this lateral part of the bone to place your implant now once that is done, then you have to place the angled guide of the DHS that is provided with the instrument set to place your guide wire. Now there is very important step. Suppose if the fracture is unstable and you want to place a derotation screw as well, then it's better to place the guide wire in inferior quadrant because then you'll have some space for placement of your leg screw. If you place the guide wire centrally like somewhere here then definitely the derotation screw hold is going to get compromised especially in those patients in which the cross section of the femoral neck is narrow like in short patients and in female patients this area is definitely going to be small now when you have placed the angle guide for guide wire insertion always check the lateral view also your angle guide should be centrally placed over the lateral surface if it is coming somewhere anterior then your guide wire may exit posteriorly and if it is coming somewhere posterior then your guide wire may exit anteriorly so always keep your guide wire centrally in the lateral view and another important thing whenever the angle guide is placed ensure that it is in full contact with the lateral surface often some soft tissue gets entrapped in this area which prevents the proper positioning of the guide and if the guide is not properly placed then definitely your guide wire will go at an abnormal place when you place the barrel plate then your fracture may get displaced so always try to match the lateral surface and the surface of the angle guide so once the guide wire has been inserted you have to check the ap as well as lateral view 
and see whether the guide wire is going in appropriate direction or not. So whenever you are erring, you have to err in the inferior direction and posterior direction. Do not place your guide wire in antero superior quadrant because that is the weakest area of the femoral neck. And because of the constant stresses in this area, there are risk of cut out of the screw from the antero superior area. And sometimes the hold of the screw is not good in this area and that results in constant instability at the fracture site which results in non-union. Once we have placed the guide wire for your DHS insertion, then to prevent the rotation of the fragment, you can place an additional wire in the superior quadrant. And studies suggest that the wire should be parallel to the wire of the left screw. But in some cases, like in comminuted fracture, you can titrate the position of this derotation screw in a plane which requires more stability. For example, in this case, you see there is posterior combination. So the guide wire for the derotation screw should preferably be placed in the posterior part because that is going to span the combination. Now you have to go with the process of triple leaving. You have to use the direct measuring device which will tell what should be the length of leg screw. So the wire will end somewhere here and you will be able to know what is the length of leg screw. Suppose the wire is ending at 85 millimeter, then you have to position the reaming channel in such a manner that this knob ends at 85 and that will decide the length of reaming. In triple reaming, we have this central most part which is meant for the threads of the leg screw and then we have this wider part which is meant for the non-threaded part of the leg screw that is required for sliding and this part the prominent part is meant for the junction of the barrel and the barrel plate so that part should have some more space because otherwise the barrel may remain proud of the lateral cortex whenever the size of the guide wire comes out to be 85 millimeter or more then you have to choose the long barrel reamer that means this part the second reamer the wider part should correspond to the length of the long barrel that is 38 millimeter and if it is coming out to be less than 80 then definitely the short barrel is the option and in that the length of this part will be 25 millimeter but whenever the stability is in doubt definitely go for a longer barrel so here you see we have started the triple reaming process your terminal part of the reamer should go till the subchondral bone. If you don't ream this track, then you will face difficulty in placement of tap and screw to this area. So the reaming has to be adequate. But in case of osteoporotic bones, you can definitely keep some part unreamed because the bone purchase is doubtful. So the next step is the tapping. For tapping, we have three attachments. The tap sleeve, then the tap and the T-handle provided by the manufacturer. So the sleeve has to be inserted in this area which was meant for the barrel. First you have to insert this sleeve over this tap then you have to attach the T-handle. So this is the assembly we have to make before starting the tapping. This part will go inside this and with gentle rotatory turns we have to insert the tap to the required area. Now after that you have to insert the leg screw. For leg screw assembly we have the leg screw then we have a coupler device. This part has a slot and a proud part. The proud part inserts in the slot of the leg screw. Then this coupling device locks this part inside the leg screw. This part has threads which get locked inside the leg screw. So we have an assembly of leg screw and the coupling device like this. Now again we have a sleeve which has to be inserted in this area and we have a T-handle kind of device or you can call it a wrench that gets inserted over this part and this part, terminal part of this wrench matches the cross section of the leg screw. So this will be the assembly we will be getting and this has to be passed over the sleeve like this and the screw has to be inserted till the appropriate TAD has been achieved and in cases when you feel that the fracture site is slightly distracted then in those cases keep the screw slightly short of the lateral cortex select the size which is slightly short of the lateral cortex because ultimately when you place the barrel plate over this area and tighten the richard screw which is outside the leg screw then the leg screw will get pulled outward and that will be pulled only if you have some space on the lateral side if you don't have any space remaining here that means the screw is almost flush to the lateral cortex or slightly proud of it then the tightening of the richard screw will not achieve any intraoperative compression 
so always keep your leg screw slightly short of the lateral surface and for all the steps that you have performed till now like reaming, tapping and screw insertion you have to keep checking the lateral view because in lateral view you have to ensure that your guide wire is not bending you are not going in a direction which is not matching because that can actually break the guide wire so always check the lateral view as well whenever you are performing all these steps the reaming, the tapping and the screw insertion so here the screw position is satisfactory and the guide wire here it is for derotation it is actually in a different plane in AP view so you should not get worried about this position that it is quite close to the screw because in other view it is not very close to the screw then you have to insert the barrel plate now barrel plate you see the cross section of the screw is like this it is elongated and similarly the cross section of the barrel plate is also like this so whenever you are inserting the screw always keep this part in excess of the lateral surface because only then the barrel which you are going to insert over the screw will match the axis of the lateral surface here you see this is the cross section of the leg screw and this is the cross section of the barrel so these two cross sections are actually corresponding ones so the barrel will pass over the screw in one unique position like you see here the cross section is elongated it has a flat surface here and here and a round surface on top part it matches with the leg screw and the leg screw axis will match with the axis of the barrel plate like this so once we have plus the leg screw then you have to insert the barrel plate then sequentially place the screws in the lower part because this part should be flush with the lateral surface if it is slightly proud and you place the richard screw before that what will happen this plate will become more proud so always place the inferior screws before placement of the compression screw that is richard screw now once you are satisfied with the position of the plate over the lateral surface confirming the same in the lateral view as well then you have to insert the richard screw which is meant for compression at the fracture site the richard screw has threads which get engaged inside the leg screw and if your leg screw is slightly short of the lateral cortex tightening of this screw pulls the leg screw outwards and ultimately you achieve the compression like you see here you see the fracture side is slightly distracted now carefully see the fracture side you see it is getting compressed now once you are satisfied with the position of the plate you have achieved the compression at the fracture side and the fracture alignment is good like it is in slight valgus then you can go for placement of the anti-rotation screw the anti-rotation screw can be a fully threaded screw or can be a partially threaded screw depending upon the fracture pattern that you are getting so in case of a simple fracture you can definitely go for a partially threaded cancel screw and in cases where you feel that the combination is more then you can go for a fully threaded screw also after that you have to close the wound in layers first of all you have to repair the vastus origin that you had released with an l-shaped incision after that you have to close the tensor facial artery. if you feel that there is some constant oozing then definitely you should put a drain also and if it's not there then you can close without a drain also and after closing the tensor facial artery, you have to close the subcutaneous layer and then the skin i hope this simple presentation will be helpful for you if you have any queries you can put those in comments thank you